Amen. Oh my God. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Amen. He is here. Can we just take a minute and just yes. acknowledge Him together? Father, we thank you. Yes, Father. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. We thank you that you are manifested in this room right now. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the work that you have for us today. Thank you for every heart that's in this room mm -hmm. that you desire to change. Everything that's in us that you desire to draw out. God, we open ourselves to you and we say yes. Our minds are open. Mm -hmm. Our hearts are open. Our hands are open, God. Mm -hmm. Do what it is that you want to do today. We worship you, Lord. Can you just thank God out of your own mouth, God? We yeah. thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Yes. You are King and you are Lord. Yeah. You have complete jurisdiction in this room right now. Mm. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Ooh. We might could just go home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. I just believe that we're in a time in the body of Christ where we are no longer to do church as usual. Mm -hmm. We're not in a time where we can rely on programs and our own work and our own handiwork and marketing things that I believe that God is shifting us back to being kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. To come out of this American church culture that we have created. Yeah. And to go back to the original tent that Jesus died for. Mm -hmm. Right? We are kingdom people mm -hmm. serving a king. Mm -hmm. Not a people gathering for good works. Mm -hmm. We're here to serve a king. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, gentlemen, can you turn to a lady that you're near? And say, I'm praying for you. This word is for you. Ladies, turn back to that man and say, thank you. But low key, it's for you too. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> okay. So, can y'all hang with me this morning? You hang with me? Okay. Because we're not going to do, you know, typical three-point message. I feel like this is going to be a journey. Okay. And it's almost as if we're walking, right? We're in a farm. We're walking. And you just get whatever it applies to you, right? So, we're going to be on a journey. You ready? Yeah. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah, put your seatbelts on, that's right. <laughs> First Corinthians 12, chapter 4. Ooh, I already said the chapter. I mean, verse 14. It's First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. Begging your pardon. We are going to look at the body real quick. And really what I want to do is spent a lot of time kind of like laying a foundation because the foundation is the most important part of any building. And if the foundation isn't sure, the whole building at some point will collapse. Uh, my brother has re relocated. He lives in Sacramento. So my mother and I went to go visit him last month. And uh, we went to San Francisco. And a very well-known company out there has built a building. And it's kind of like their Empire State Building. It's pretty tall and it's got real expensive bougie condos in there. People are paying prices that are worth more than my car a month in rent and it's quite ridiculous. Um, 
But the foundation is such that it is sinking. So it really doesn't matter the bougie quality in the rest of the building. The building is sinking. So what good is the building at this point? And they can't fix it. So today, we're going to lay a sure foundation that we can build upon after we leave here. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's labor. 1 Corinthians 12, we're going to read verses 14 to 25, but we're going to read the first portion, 12. Why do I keep switching the numbers? 14 to 20. It's right there. <laughs> Pay no attention to my mouth. Lord have mercy. So Paul is talking about how the body is one but has many members, and the many members are part of one body. And we pick up, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. We can keep going. If the whole body were an eye, where would, the sense, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Let's stop right there. What this means is that everyone is necessary. Amen. There is not one part of the body that is not necessary. Everybody has a role to fill. And it does not matter what it looks like. Everyone is necessary. If you are one of these that is looking at a part and saying, well, I'm not that, so uh, I don't belong. That is your perception. And what you need to do with your perception is align it. Your perception is out of alignment. If your car is out of alignment, if you let that wheel go, you're about to be in the passenger seat of whoever's next to you. Or hanging out on the guardrail. Right? Our alignment needs to be adjusted so that we are in alignment with God's will and his purpose. We cannot say that we're not necessary. Also, can we go back to the, the first batch, if that makes sense? <laughs> I'm glad you know my lingo. <laughs> look at this. Because, let's look at verse 15. Because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. What is the response to that? That would not make you any less a part of the body. The importance of aligning your perception is that you still have a part to play. You're still accountable for your part. You can never be on the wayside because at the end of all things, you will still be accountable for what your role is. <coughs> Everyone is necessary. Everyone is necessary. Let's continue on with uh, verses 21 to 25. Now, I know we said this was for the ladies and low-key for the gentlemen. So sometimes we as women have a, a habit of saying, well, you know, I'm not like this. Like, mama, um, I'm going to use a lot of you, so just be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> My mama watches uh, a lot of these ladies on YouTube and um doing their notebooks and different things like that. And we actually were talking about this yesterday, how people will view these women, how they meal prep for their families. And it, some women, it's like, it seems like, does it have to be all that? <laughs> like, you're doing the most. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you gotta use plastic for all eight of your kids. You know what that's doing? That works for her, right? That's for her. That does not downplay me, nor does it downplay her. Right? So let's look at this next batch. Batch. I don't know where that came from. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. 
nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Mm -hmm. And on those parts of the body we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. We can keep going. Which our more presentable parts don't require. But God, again, God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body but that the members may have the same care for one another. Just as much as I can't look at someone and say, just because they're doing this means I'm not important, I can't say that, nor can I say, ah, oh, well, I'm good, I don't need you. How would you feel if your finger just jumped up off your hand? <laughs> Emma's like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, like, where are you going? It's like that, that, yeah, like, with who? Whose body are you going to attach to now? You know, like, you're going to attach to somebody, you know, like, because you're going to just writhe on the floor by yourself. It's really what's going to happen. You know, like, you say with the little kids, and you're like, oh, got your nose. And they're like, mm, give it back. Because <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> Every part is necessary and cannot be by itself. We cannot isolate and withdraw ourselves, nor can we say, I'm less than. Okay? Everyone has a purpose. And what it is, is that God has called us to unity and not uniformity. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are to be unified, just not in uniform. Right. Uniform meaning that everyone does the same thing, they wear the same thing, they say the same thing. Unity says we have differences, but together they accomplish a greater purpose. Amen. Amen. What it is, apart from that unity, we are missing crucial aspects of God's attributes. If we don't come together in our diversity, we will miss vital attributes of God's, of God's character right. and his nature. Because some of us uh, um, are not as compassionate as we ought to be. <laughs> um, and so people would miss out on his mercy if they were all like me. Right? People would miss out on his kindness if some people decided to come to the background. We all need to work together in unity in our diversity so that people get a full picture of who God is. Right. Amen. That's right. Listen, the church is called the bride of Christ. Meaning we are made for him. It, in a whole picture. No man is just going to marry a woman for her one eye, right? No man of sound mind is going to marry a woman because of her one leg. So it is with Christ. The whole body is necessary. Amen? Amen. We need each other. Now, we need each other because everybody has a purpose, right? The fingers have a purpose, right? The hand, the whole hand has a purpose because if we didn't have hands, how would we give, right? If the body didn't have feet, how would we go? If there was no mouth, who would hear the goodness of God? Every part is necessary for the kingdom, for the kingdom, remember, for the kingdom. Now, your assignment, your position in the body does not determine your value. Your position, what you do, does not determine your value. Your value is determined by your sonship. Your sonship, meaning you being a son or daughter, you being a member of the body of Christ gives you your value. That gives you your worth. 
out of your value, you work your purpose. If you don't know your worth, you will not properly execute your purpose. Mm -hmm. So know your worth. Know your worth. Listen. Ephesians 1, verses 4 to 5 says, Even as he, the Father, chose us in him before the foundation of the world, we have done nothing to earn our value. Our worth comes because he gave it to us. Right? That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons. Through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. Therefore, everything that I do flows out of my worth. I accomplish my purpose because I am a daughter. I don't work purpose to become a daughter. I'm already a daughter. Right. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. New creation. Everything that you have done, the old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Right? You didn't have to do anything for that. You did nothing to deserve it. You couldn't earn it, like the song says. He gave it anyway and lavished it. God the Father does not love Jesus more than he loves us. That can kind of seem heretical, but it's not. The same love that the Father gave to the Son, he gives to us. He does it withhold that we're not in a hierarchy of okay I love Jesus the most and then here comes these these kids here and then you know I got stepkids over here and uh, over here in this area code no God is not like that Jesus died once for all everyone has the same worth everyone has the same value now your purpose varies from one another Right, like we talked about every member. The fingers cannot do what the leg does. Everyone serves a different purpose. But that doesn't demean your value. Your value remains. That's why your value is at the root of all things. It's at the foundation of everything. So if I know how valued I am, it won't matter that what uh, Sally Ann over there is doing is quantitatively bigger than what I'm doing. In fact, I celebrate what Sally is doing because Sally's a part of the kingdom of God. And when Sally thrives, everyone thrives. When I thrive, Sally thrives. We are a part of a whole. We're not in competition with one another. We are not teams in intramural sports with the green team, the green machines are over here, the red sharks, the blue barracudas. No. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. It's the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. That's it. Those are the only teams in the game if you want to look at it that way. And we're over here. If we're in Christ, we're in the kingdom of God. Of his dominion, there is no end. Hallelujah. There is no end to his dominion. And we get to be a part of that. We get to be a part of that. Now, foundation is laid. Everyone has worth. And everyone has the same worth. Everyone has purpose, which varies. And I need to know my worth so that I can properly execute my purpose. And it doesn't matter what my purpose looks like compared to another person because we're accomplishing the same goal for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So as we've been talking about the body, women, we've all been born. We're all made with a womb, right? Every woman in here has a womb. Every female has a womb. Which means that every woman has been born to birth something. Be it physical or literal, and or literal. We have the ability to give birth to something. 
and to do so authentically, right? Because purpose varies. Mm -hmm. So I come to ask you this morning, woman, what's in your womb? What is in your womb? What's in your womb? You have value as a woman, as a daughter of the Most High God. You're created to hold something, to conceive, to nurture, to process, and then to give birth. What's in here? What has God put on the inside of you to supply to the whole? What has God put on the inside of you to give to the body of Christ? Yes, to work here at Culture Church, but also to the global body of Christ. What's in here? What's in your womb? Have you thought about that? Undoubtedly, you have. What's your purpose? Listen. Some of us are born to give birth to natural children. Right? And in those people, like when you think about Rebecca from the Old Testament, Isaac's wife, what, did, what was told to her? You have two nations in your womb right now. Are you giving birth to nations? Yeah. Or is it that you have a business in your womb? Is it a business? Is it a position in ministry? What's in your womb? What's in your womb? We read about how God chose and he, he predestined. So it's the Holy Spirit who will reveal it to you. And I also want to encourage you that just as it takes nine months, give or take, you'll have to wrestle what's going, with what's growing. You'll have to nurture what's growing on the inside of you. That's why you have to be intentional about what's in your womb, what your purpose is. You have worth because God's entrusted you to, to harbor that, to nurture that thing. He's entrusted it to you. You have the worth to, to have it to conceive. What is it? What's in your womb? That's what I've come to ask you this morning. What's in your womb? What's God put on the inside of you? I believe that God is marking some of us in here this morning to tell us what's in our womb, tell us our purpose. And I also believe that some of us have given up on some dreams. You've laid them to the wayside because there was no template for whatever you felt like you had. But there's sometimes that God gives us new things. Right. right? God is creator God. That's right. He's not duplicator God. Yeah. That's right. Right? He's not up there with templates like, oh, well, I made about five billies already. I guess I should move on to Danny's, but there's 15 of those. Well, I mean, maybe I'll change this little thing right here. Mm -mm. Psalm 139 says that he knitted us together. That's right. That's intentional working in the womb. That's right. He's giving you a specific purpose. He's put something specific in your womb. What is in your womb? Every one of you have a purpose. My prayer today and I believe that God is wanting to, the heart of the Father this morning is to restore dreams back to you. Things that seemed like it was going, 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 and then took a horrible, unseen derailment. He's putting it back on track this morning. Things that you, that looked impossible and looked so much bigger than you, it will come to pass. Though I only see in part, I will prophesy the promise. That's right. That's right. Because you finish what you start, I will trust you in the process. That's right. I believe you, God. 
God is restoring dreams this morning. He is renewing purposes. He's putting hope where there was hopelessness before. Mm -hmm. Why? Because every joint supplies for his kingdom, for his glory, to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. Could you stand to your feet this morning? I don't know where all of you are, but I know everybody has a, has a part of where they are. Their feet are somewhere. You are somewhere. You're not floating, lost somewhere. You are somewhere. Don't know where that is, but God knows where that is. The Holy Spirit knows where that is. And I'm believing this morning that he's identifying where you are and giving you the steps of where you need to go. Some of you might have lost your way. Some of you are like, I'd love to be a part of this body. How do I become a part of the body so that I can know my worth and accomplish my purpose? If that's you today, I want you to meet my King Jesus. He descended from his throne to be born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life that I couldn't live to die a death that I should have died for my unrighteousness. The righteous king took the cross and died for me. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And not only eternal life with him once I leave this place, but for now, I get plugged into a body and I automatically belong. And I have a purpose and I have a job to do.